My mother was saying, gosh, I don't know what's happened to you since you've seen your cousin Mosiah, but if I win the lottery, tell her I'll give her millions. Then she calls weeks later and is asking now Christina for spiritual advice. I could honestly tell you, if I went back to Tucson now and I talked to anybody, even just talking with my family, they don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> they have questions. I'm serious. They're like, who no, the hell is no, this person standing in front of me? And I wanted to go back and touch on the talking about the crucifying the eye and, and the fact that we need to be resurrected in Christ every day. Uh -huh. I see so many people praying to God to save them from conditions, to save them from things that are going on in the world, the hatred, the killing, to save them from, from their lives and what they're having to deal with in their life. But truly, we should be praying to God to save us from ourselves. Yeah, exactly. That's what we need salvation yeah, from. That's, that's the key thing. I, I, I told this Leo as well uh, in an email. I said, the biggest enemy of you is yourself. Um, Absolutely, and that rings true in everyone's life. And we look at these outer things that we feel are imposing on us, but truly, it's coming from within us. Yeah. So, uh -huh. you know, really, it's, it boils down to save us from ourselves. Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably uh, if if Christ uh, is within us instead of instead of instead of without, then probably uh, Lucifer, the devil, has a has a place there too. Uh, I mean, it makes perfect sense from a symmetrical point of view. Yeah. Absolutely. So, wow. Yeah. Well, this is good stuff, Phil. I love your interviews, and I don't even listen like when we do them. I'm so bad. <laughs> Confession. I don't That's listen right. to my... You do most I don't of the listen talking, to so, my... I mean, it's most of your ideas anyway, so... No, no, but I mean, I don't even listen to the interviews that we do. I hear everybody, you know, and their feedback, which is mostly positive, but I mean... These are the best conversations. Whenever we get on them, I don't think of myself or anyone I bring. I tell them, don't think of it being as an interview because yeah. you're such a good journalist and interviewer that it feels comfortable and we can be ourselves. Uh -huh. And I like that because it keeps an yeah. element of reality for the people that listen to your shows uh -huh. that we're everyday people. Yeah. And if these people that come into contact with me that I bring to you just so they can tell their own testimony instead of it just being me relaying it and it's them actually telling it, then it gives people a broader expectation on God that there's people in their own towns that obviously have to be way more illuminated than I could ever hope to be. So if God's gracious enough to use me and do what he's done in Tina and do the things that he's done in all of us that have been talking to you, how much more will he do for people that are seeking him? That's, to me, like the key of the message is seek. Keep on seeking. It's great to listen to the stuff about the Masons and the New World Order. And I told, you know, someone I spoke to, I'll keep it that general, earlier today, yeah. um, the same thing. I said, you know, regardless of whatever your missions are, whatever you think it is you're doing, who cares? Live in now. Not to say don't prepare for tomorrow. But don't let it get so where you're so New World Order oriented in your mind that you can't even, you sacrifice today. And I want people to realize that, that there's stuff, the kingdom of God is right now, right here. It's at hand, right now, in us. And that if we'll go in, we'll experience myriads of joys and blessings that when the, the whole quote unquote end of times comes, we would be the ones throwing the first party for it, going, woo! <laughs> Come on! Bring it on, uh -huh. because we're not afraid of anything. We know our continuity of eternality. We're not worried about when we take this gar garment of flesh off, because we know we're what we're going to be doing, and there's so much activity <laughs> that's going to continue to go. And, and different people keep limiting our minds by keeping us afraid of tomorrow's events, or 2012, uh -huh. or 2019. And we don't have to fear any of that. Right now, let's have a 2019 right now. Let's have a 2012 right now in our freaking psyche, in our soul, in our mind. Let's kill these eyes. Let's kill the Antichrist within ourself and see the second coming of the Lord really manifested in us. Yeah, exactly. Meaning in our own spiritual walk, in our own mind, where we see we're not looking for this static moment where he's literally going to come riding out of the sky on a white horse. <laughs> Let him sit in the sky of our mind. Where all these lies in the throne room of our mind, all this, this antichrist spirit that says, I am God. 
I am the one that's going to get you what you need. I will get the promotion. I will get well. I can do it. I can make myself have all the things I should have because if I do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then I am guaranteed it'll work out. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all of thy might, it's written. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge the Lord, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, but fear the Lord and keep his commandments. Meaning what? I don't know, Jack. The only thing I know is what the I am that I am can tell me. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Well, in, in, um, in a paraphrased form. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly. But, I mean, it's, it was not exactly in the sense that it was, um, you know, in every word um, the same, but it, it was paraphrased. So, yeah. yeah, it's... Um, yeah, we have to recognize that we have a divine uh, teacher within us, probably. Yes. And the teacher actually is the Holy Spirit. Jesus even told us that, that the Holy Spirit would teach us the things of the Father and teach us even more about the Son as we live our lives, that the teacher is the comforter, the whole, even the Holy Spirit. And, and like a mother teaches their child. That's a mother's job. You teach your baby to say mama, say dada when you're little. Yeah. The yeah. mom's the one that's always reemphasizing that and reinforcing that. Come here, baby, crawl to mama. Come on. Then the baby learns how to crawl. Come here, walk, pulling up on different pieces of furniture. And the mom is nurturing. The mother's feeding. The mother's teaching sing A, B, C, D, E, F, G to teach the alphabet. And the Holy Spirit does the same thing when you look at Kabbalah, teaching us from Aleph to Tav who he is, who this uh, Jesus is, this Mashiach, who is the Holy Spirit. And they're all, we're, we're learning as we walk and let what we call the inner voice. And you'll hear a lot of Christians use the terminology, well, he spoke, he spoke in that small, still voice, that inner voice, where you know it's beyond your own. I mean... As wonderfully intelligent and as much as I love my cousin, she doesn't have the godly intellectualism to sit there and just know right away, I would get angry about a sandwich, but I know that it could only be jealousy, therefore I've already shunned it and it is gone. Poof. And Elijah, I would be glad to make this sandwich for you because I have overcome all. No! She came in here and had to do some hardcore grunt work. Oh. And was willing to do it when she heard the teacher say, check it out, you're mm -hmm. jealous. Yeah. And so when we hear that inner voice, if we'll obey it, mm -hmm. if we'll sit there and we will analyze it, like how you said you do, observe it, analyze it, see what you come out with. Yes, introspection. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say something because she was touching on the Holy Spirit being our teacher but I, and people read about that you inherit a family that you are then a bloodline of Christ but the family the Godhead to know God the Father Jesus the Son and the Mother the Holy Spirit literally you the Lord gives you this awesome thing where you you can decipher between who is before you and who is speaking to you mm -hmm. and it is a family when I say family, I have the family that I always wanted and that I never had I have a daddy that I can go up and pray to and cry to and say daddy I know I fell down but can you help me clean the scrape off my knee and help me get back up and, and ride the horse drunk, again right. and he won't be drunk and he won't be mad but he tells me how much he loves me and when I'm seeking something and I don't understand and I want to go, Mommy, I don't get this. I love you so much, but I don't understand. Show me. Sit down and teach me what 2 plus 2 equals 4 because I, I think 2 plus 2 equals 5. But my mother's there to hold me and blanket me and cover me. And the lover that I've been looking for my entire life, the one man that will love me no matter what and that I would love no matter what, unconditional, pure, unadulterated love, Jesus, I have him. He's my lover. <laughs> I'm lovesick for the Lord, but I have this whole family unit that was always there, but that I never knew. Mm -hmm. And anyone can have that, and you truly do inherit a family. And it's not dysfunctional. Wow, there's a freaking miracle! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You try to find, you show me one non-dysfunctional family. I'm talking about just one. Forget a lineage or genealogy of it. Just one real, fully functional family. There isn't. Everybody has dysfunctions because we're human. But this heavenly family, sacred unity, doesn't. There's no dysfunctions in that. And we have every right. And trust me, I've looked. There's none. <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I, I should be worried if there was. <laughs> so. But I mean, how many people that are listening have had something, some aspect of Tina's story happen in their life, whether it was physical abuse, drug abuse, emotional abuse, yeah, you know, um, alcoholic whatever backgrounds, drugs, 